Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, can you remember when you saw a picture come to life? Maybe it was when you had a color television in your home for the first time. Or maybe it was when you saw a black and white photo restored in color. Or when you saw black and white footage turned to color. Or maybe it was when you saw a high-definition TV for the first time. Or maybe it was when you saw a filter on your phone put one of your pictures in just the right light. Whatever it was, the picture brought joy to your heart and it put a smile on your face. The story from Ezekiel this morning is about things coming to life. And it's not your typical story from the Old Testament. Most stories from there talk about historical events that had happened, giving promises and guidance from God, preparing you for the future. Now, this story from Ezekiel does have a time and place, and even direction from God, but it's given through a vision, not through a simple storytelling. It's not so much an apocalyptic prophecy about the end times, but yet it still speaks about the resurrection of the dead. God uses this vision to Ezekiel to bring hope to his people. When Ezekiel was given this vision, God's people were still in exile. They were still waiting for God to deliver them from Babylon. Now, I don't know about you, but I find when I'm waiting for things, it can seem like an eternity. And I'm just talking about waiting for my next doctor's appointment. (laughs) Now, I'd imagine that the 40 years the Israelites were waiting for them to be delivered from Babylon, it would seem like that moment would never come. For those who were, for those were an unpleasant 40 years. A time of living in a country that had worship practices that were bad for your spiritual health. Living in a country where the practices of a survival of the fittest was, was rampant instead of living in God's gracious and sacrificial love. It was a time of living as second-class citizens, to not be able to go to temple, to not have a place to worship God in the fullness as God had asked of them, where the whole city was up in celebration, such as the celebration of Pentecost. Instead, they were worshiping God in small circles of people whenever and whenever they could. Could you imagine trying to get through even just a single year? But in the midst of the Israelites' troubled hearts, when they even wondered if God cared for them, God gave Ezekiel this vision. Ezekiel saw a valley full of dry bones. God questioned Ezekiel and asked if these bones would come alive. Ezekiel says to God that he should know the answer to that question. Then God says that Ezekiel shall prophesy over these bones to tell them to hear the word of the Lord and that God will breathe life into them. And God tells them that when they see these things, they will know that God is still God. 
So in Ezekiel's vision, Ezekiel prophesied to the dry bones. And the bones did indeed come to life. People were formed as tendons were placed on top of bones. Skin covered the joints, but yet the bodies still seem to have no life in them. But then God told Ezekiel to prophesy breath into these bodies so that those who were slain, the Israelites who were defeated at war, may live. And Ezekiel did so. And an amazing army, alive and well, not zombie, but fully human, were ready to represent the Lord. And so God tells Ezekiel that just as God, just as he can make these dry bones come alive, so will he bring his towering people out of Babylon. And when this happens, the people of Israel will know that God is still God. And there did come a day when the Israelites did return to Israel. They were able to be in and run their own nation. But they didn't return as a military force, but as a scattered people slowly returning home. Here we can see that God, who is faithful to his promises, was faithful to the promise of saving his people. Here in this vision from Ezekiel, we see another picture of what God can do, like what he did when he first created Adam and Eve. When God created man, he breathed life into the dust and made the crown of his creation, something beautiful. He made a human, something he fearfully and wonderfully made. So what does this message from Ezekiel have to do with us Christians today? Yes, humans are still the crown of creation to God, but though we have sinned as we but though we have sinned as we lived in this cursed world, God still cares about us and desires for us to live well. But whenever I see this passage selected for a particular Sunday, I have to ask myself, how am I supposed to preach on this passage? What are the people supposed to take away? In Christian pop music lately, the passage has been referred to more so than I've ever heard before. And I have to ask, why? Is there something I'm missing? Is there something people that are longing for than ever before? And the answer I'm coming up with is people are longing to see a miracle. People are wanting God to bring restoration. Restoration to their lives, to their community, to those who are hurting, like dry bones coming to life. When I read the comments to the song Rattle by Ele Elevation Worship, one person commented, I'm praying for everyone here who's experiencing depression, anxiety, those who lost their jobs, that God would grant them healing and restoration to their faith. And many other people there gave their testimony of how God worked in their life 
especially how God had delivered them from the impossible. One person said, I was an atheist for 25 plus years and deeply anti-Christian. But in August of 2020, at the lowest point I ever was in my life, I tried praying for the first time. Amazing things happened since. I experienced the Holy Spirit physically that shook my entire worldview to its core. I've seen signs and wonders that defy explanation, except that Christ is true and that Christ loves us. I now work in full-time ministry serving the Lord to anyone reading this. And so to anyone who has doubts, ask God to reveal himself with a sincere heart. And he will surely show the truth to you. With this passage from Ezekiel, with the vision of the Valley of Dry Bones, I can easily see how signs had won this church saying, look here, in God's name, you're supposed to pronounce life into whatever struggling situation you've got going on and expect everything to be alive and well after such a prayer or command. And while there are many other passages of Scripture that seem to support this idea, I still would wrestle with preaching this takeaway. This takeaway that spiritualizes the text rather than seeking what God can do through his word, which is what a person would do through an expository sermon. Yes, I do hope that God answers your prayers and that God brings people to life like a black and white film that is remade in color. And I hope that God will speak into your soul, bring you out of all death and darkness and fill you with life and joy. Something that is greater than what any person could imagine by their own strength. I remember for myself when I heard the message of the Bible that was taught in a worship setting that brought joy and energy to my life. And the truth was now shaping me and how I was designed to live. It gave me a message to help me find my identity in God as someone who was loved. And through God's word, I learned to take to heart the good news that I belonged to him. And likewise, this message from Ezekiel is for you as well. All of you belong to God. God's promises of life and salvation is for you as well. That we are dead, that while we are dead in our sins in this cursed world, that while we are weak in our own strength and can lose hope in this world, God gives us his word. And he promises that there will come a time when he will indeed rescue us. On this day of Pentecost, it's often difficult to preach the message of Christ crucified for us. The message that our sins are forgiven through Christ's perfect life as he was sacrificed on the cross. For there's a lot of talk about God pouring his spirit into his creation. God pouring his spirit into his broken and ignorant people and giving them life. But much of the life that is brought to the people comes from receiving the good news. 
God telling the people that he is a God of his promises. That, and that he said he would save his people and he has a plan to do it. And that we ought not to lose this hope. I know some of you have shared some difficult things that you all have gone through. But I, but I bet there are even more things you have yet to share with anyone in this church. And I'd imagine there are things that you don't even realize you are struggling with. Probably like how I have things I don't realize I am struggling with. But the message today isn't about a lost hope. Nor is it about living our lives where others around us might wonder if we are under the influence of some substance. No, the New Testament church is to be reminded of the certain hope that we have. That not only God continues to pour his Holy Spirit into our lives, to bring life into our lives as he leads us to do good works, but also that the Holy Spirit will keep us strong in the Christian faith and the saving faith found in Jesus Christ. That in this hope, whatever comes our way, no matter how difficult life becomes, we don't have to fear or despair what is going on. Jesus is alive. Our sins are forgiven through Jesus Christ from his work on the cross. And when Jesus comes back a second time, he will take the dust from our grave and put it all back together and bring us into the full and perfect living bodies, living for his purpose, living in a world for eternity that will be far more remarkable than seeing your favorite black and white film, restored in color for a greater experience. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, we will now collect our offering.